Life expectancy of dog diabetes. When asked that question, some people may reply, should I put my dog down if he has diabetes? The answer is no. Diabetes will only cause a fraction of those affected to die. A dog's expected lifespan with diabetes The average lifespan of a dog with diabetes is about 12 years. Over the first few months of being diagnosed, your dog can live an additional two years if they aren't untreated. Diabetes in dogs is something that can be cured with treatment. If diabetes is not treated, it will negatively affect the dog's life expectancy and quality of life. Also known as ketoacidosis, high blood sugar levels can cause weakness in the legs, along with ketoacidosis, dehydration, cataracts, and premature death. There are six months to several years between the two of them being separated. Your dog's quality of life will improve dramatically as long as you use insulin to control the level of blood glucose in the dog's system. Dog Diabetes Treatment Length of Survival Diabetes diet is the first step in the treatment of diabetes in dogs. To keep the blood sugar levels in check, you should give your dog a low-sugar and low-fat diet while drinking too much water can be a sign of diabetes, excessive thirst can also be a symptom of diabetes. An overabundance of glucose or an improper process of breaking down glucose can lead to a dog feeling thirsty. If you frequently go to the bathroom, this may be an indication that you have diabetes related to excessive water consumption. It is possible that your dog has diabetes if you find that he drinks more water and has frequent urination. People who have lost or gained a lot of weight quickly may have diabetes. The more lethargic your dog, the more weight it will gain. Diabetes may occur due to other health problems, like an infection, that cause the dog to lose his appetite. If your dog has diabetes, how do you know? Changes in your dog's eating, drinking, and weight change should be monitored if diabetes occurs in older dogs. Some common signs of diabetes include, drinks large amounts of water. Pungent, fruity and a foul-smelling breath There are several symptoms that appear in diabetic dogs. Engages in heavy drinking, much more than usual, devouring everything in sight A rapid or sudden loss of weight While there are no known causes for canine diabetes, certain factors do increase your dog's chances of getting the disease. The following factors are considered, diabetes is more common in female dogs that have not been spayed. Seniors are more likely to get this disease than middle-aged dogs. In the past, an attack of pancreatitis could potentially damage the pancreas over time, which then impairs the body's ability to produce insulin. Obesity, which may cause insulin resistance, is a factor in weight. For many dog owners, genetics may be a deciding factor when getting a new dog. Be sure to check your paperwork with the Kennel Club if you got your dog from a breeder. You should not overlook diabetes as a possibility, even if your dog does not exhibit any of the symptoms described. According to Drive, Okel, says the dog expert, all small dogs, including the following breeds, are likely to develop diabetes, though all dogs can develop the disease. Age is also a significant factor. On average, a dog will get diabetes between the ages of 5 and 7 years old, claims Drive. Ocal. Rarely, dogs can develop diabetes before they turn 5, or they can even be born with it. Nonetheless, these events are uncommon. Therapy while you are under the care of your veterinarian. A specialized diet and exercise program will be implemented in order to prevent fluctuations in glucose levels. Additionally, you will learn how to check your dog's blood sugar levels. Once your vet determines the type and dose of insulin you will administer to your dog at home, you will also receive instruction on how to give the injections. Doctors learn more about the disease and therefore new treatment plans are easily developed as a result. Continue reading to learn more about what diabetes mellitus does to a dog, common signs and symptoms to look out for, and the most critical piece of information, how to keep your dog healthy for as long as possible. With the help of your veterinarian, you'll learn how to handle your dog's diabetes at home. 
Furthermore, you'll learn essential skills that help maintain your dog's quality of life while extending his slash her life. The total cost of treatment. Dealing with canine diabetes can be costly and frustrating, given the number of injections and search for the correct dosage. This disease requires a lot of patience, as the pet parent must spend a lot of time with their pet. During the early stages of treatment, the price of diabetes in dogs is quite high, but the expenditure is significant. The price of your dog's diabetes medicine depends on the type of insulin and dose, which may cost $40-$200 per month. The average life expectancy of a dog with diabetes is 7 years. According to Drive, Ocal, insulin injections are a critical part of the treatment for diabetes. Type 1 and type 2 diabetes in dogs differ in how long they last. People with diabetes type 1 don't have enough insulin produced by the pancreas to convert sugar in the blood into energy. Type 2 diabetes in dogs is diagnosed when the body's response to normal amounts of insulin in the blood is deficient. Insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus The most common type of diabetes in dogs is called type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is said to occur when a dog is dependent on insulin, making him slash her insulin dependent. When the pancreas does not produce enough insulin, this occurs. Without insulin, the body can't use sugars, fats, and proteins efficiently. Without a location to which it can be transported, that glucose remains in the blood. Desperately trying to filter the excess sugar from the system, the kidneys put in extra effort to rid the body of it. At this point, a vicious cycle develops with no sign of slowing down. When there is not enough sugar converted to energy, the brain senses a lack and works to increase sugar consumption. Type 2 diabetes of the diabetic process Although this type of diabetes occurs more frequently in older, obese dogs, it doesn't occur solely in them. Dogs with diabetes insipidus have an extremely intense thirst and excessive urination. They have this metabolic condition, and they urinate frequently to the point where they lose control of their bladders. Dog Diabetes Life Expectancy, Insipidus Diabetes Duration for Dogs, it is a difficult question to answer because of the variety of factors involved. Every dog has a unique lifespan because of his slash her age, underlying health conditions, and the type of diabetes insipidus he or she has. This disease is completely treatable. Read this post in its entirety to learn all the signs and symptoms of any problem, then trust your instincts if you believe anything is wrong. Diabetes insipidus has two basic types, and the one which is more easily treated is called diabetes insipidus. Anomalous, or primary, central diabetes insipidus in dogs vasopressin is the hormone responsible for this condition. Vasopressin is secreted by the pituitary gland, which is found in the brain. It is a water retention regulator. This phenomenon occurs when the body can no longer maintain water levels long enough to properly nourish and hydrate it, so the body secretes it quickly. Even if your dog drinks as much as he or she wants, they just can't seem to get enough. The water exits the opposite end. As a result, there is a severe dehydration cycle that begins. Dehydration in dogs can show in several ways. When you pinch the skin, it doesn't spring back. If you pull the skin a little on the back of the neck, it will easily return to its original position. This object should rebound. Decreased appetite vomiting whether it's accompanied by diarrhea or not. Exhaustion gasping for breath dull, unfocused eyes drying nasal passages candy coated gums One type of diabetes in dogs, called neurogenic diabetes insipidus, needs to be treated with a synthetic version of the hormone ADH, antidiuretic hormone. The type of diabetes termed idiopathic by veterinarians does not have a known or obvious cause. Even very rare conditions can have diabetes insipidus as a result. Central or neurogenic diabetes insipidus is caused by multiple factors. Pituitary gland tumors or head trauma can cause this condition. It may be idiopathic in some cases, 
which means that there is no known cause. Polydipsia and polyuria can be caused by various issues, including increased thirst, polydipsia, and excessive urination, polyuria. Also known as diabetes mellitus is a different type of diabetes entirely that is unrelated to diabetes insipidus. Pancreatitis, kidney disease, hyponatremia, hypercalcemia, and central pontine myelinolysis kidney disease Cushing syndrome heat stroke causes cancers. Leprosy type 1 diabetes The lifespan of a dog with central diabetes insipidus is only 7 years. Diabetic dogs with central diabetes insipidus can lead long, healthy lives if they are properly treated. A synthetic hormone, such as oxytocin, is given to replace the vasopressin that the pituitary gland lacks the ability to release. Desmopressin, an antidiuretic hormone replacement is used, also known as DDAVAP. The drops or injection can be administered under the skin or into the eye. After how long does desmopressin take to begin working in dogs? It may take from 1 to 2 hours for desmopressin to begin working for dogs. It takes about 2 to 8 hours for maximum efficiency to be reached. The effects of this supplement can last for up to 24 hours in some dogs. There are possible side effects associated with using desmopressin in dogs. Some dogs may experience eye irritation when taking desmopressin. Your dog is quite allergic to something. If he or she develops hives, facial swelling, or breathing difficulty, make sure they get medical attention immediately. Most dogs, however, do not experience severe side effects during normal situations. Weighing the benefits of a medication against the diseases it's being used to treat is crucial for veterinarians. If you fail to give your diabetic dog medication, the risks are substantial. Without treatment, this type of diabetes causes severe dehydration and death in dogs. Is also known as nephrogenic diabetes insipidus in dogs while central diabetes insipidus is comparatively simple, this other condition tends to be a little more complex. The primary cause of diabetes insipidus is a deficiency of vasopressin secretion from the hypothalamus. Although the pituitary gland does its job, the body refuses to use it. Since these particular hormones are synthetic, they will not be of any use. A quick way to increase your optimism, remind yourself that the particular type of diabetes you have is extremely rare. Causes of knees in dogs include, this rare condition should be noted. Some researchers believe it is genetic. Diseases that have no known cause and have secondary causes are referred to as idiopathic diseases. All the things in the secondary section are things like, kidney failure in people with diabetes liver disease Cushing syndrome a deficiency of potassium, low blood potassium levels, inflammatory pyometra, infection of the uterus, sometimes, drug side effects occur. It is extremely rare for someone to have hyperthyroidism. A dog's lifespan with nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is about 6 to 9 years. The life expectancy of this breed of dog is only a few years. As there are few treatment options for dogs with nephrogenic diabetes, that is why. He is not saying that the disease is necessarily a death sentence, but it will necessitate frequent monitoring and a whole new lifestyle that entails major changes to the way you live. Keep a supply of fresh water on hand for the dog at all times. Do not worry. Go ahead and let the dog relieve itself much more frequently. The veterinarian may sometimes prescribe a low dose of hydrochlorothiazide with a low-sodium diet that has been specifically tailored to the patient. In diabetes insipidus, patients will be very thirsty and will experience frequent urination. If you give your dog a no-salt diet, be careful. Check to see if your budget can accommodate suggested options that fit your needs. Beware of ingredients that have the word salt in them while shopping online or in stores. It is important to be cautious about the many different ingredients found on the American Heart Association's watch list. Read, 21 ingredients that are associated with sodium in the ingredients list. Healthy food that is salt-free is available in many forms. Looking for less salty, 
high-quality food without breaking the bank is a good place to start. To be certain that a food is safe and healthy for your dog, ask your veterinarian about the retail store brands. Insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus This variant occurs due to pregnancy-related hormones or tumors. In the past three decades, the number of dogs diagnosed with diabetes has increased by a factor of three. For the first 60 days after diagnosis, only half of the patients survived. Dogs with diabetes have the same expected lifespan as non-diabetic dogs of the same age and gender at the present time. The life expectancy of dogs with diabetes is 17. 7 years, according to How to Prevent Canine Diabetes. It is challenging to prevent diabetes in dogs. Because of her genetic predisposed predisposition to diabetes, many dogs with diabetes are born with it. However, you can easily prevent the insulin-resistant type of diabetes caused by estrus or pregnancy by spaying your female dog. According to Drive, Ocal, the link between obesity and diabetes in canines is not established. Regardless, it is believed that obesity can contribute to insulin resistance, and avoiding it could lead to better treatment. A pancreatitis episode has been shown to raise the risk of canine diabetes. Genetic causes can lead to pancreatitis, but fatty food like pork and other meat products may also trigger the disease. When it comes to dog food, feed your dog a healthy, balanced food with plenty of fruits and vegetables, and restrict extras. To stay lean, be careful not to overeat and work out regularly, drive. Ocal says. Because your veterinarian can help you figure out what your dog's diet should look like to help avoid obesity, if you are unsure about how much to feed your dog, they can help you create a diet plan to help avoid obesity. To what extent are blood glucose curves prone to inaccuracies? The results of the curve may be influenced by several factors, each of which may affect the curve's accuracy. Stress can influence a person's glycemic response, which is one of the ways that exercise and eating patterns differ. Thus, your veterinarian will evaluate any changes in insulin therapy based on how your animal appears to be doing. As well, the variability of curves from day to day is not uncommon as various things such as diet, digestion, metabolism, exercise, hormones, stress, etc. can affect blood glucose levels. Should the blood glucose curve be done more often than every two weeks? When it has been effectively regulated, there's a good chance that it will be checked every six months, or more frequently if a problem is suspected. The veterinarian will give you an idea of how often to give the medication. Yes, diabetes insipidus and diabetes mellitus are both subtypes of diabetes. Absolutely not. Diabetes insipidus also known as water diabetes, is a result of a reduced concentration of urine because the kidneys can't filter large amounts of dilute urine effectively. While diabetes mellitus is less common, it is not uncommon. Diabetes insipidus occurs due to brain or kidney damage. Animals with diabetes insipidus have no glucose in their urine. The best insulin for diabetic dogs is different for every individual pet. When it comes to medication, your veterinarian is your most capable advisor. Many different insulin products are available, and different responses will vary. It may take some experimentation to find the insulin dosage for your dog. The onset, peak, and duration of insulin action vary. When given intermediate-acting insulin, such as Humulin N, most dogs do well. However, others benefit more from long-acting insulin or combinations of various types of insulin. Using insulin that is only fresh and replacing the insulin bottle every 6 to 8 weeks is imperative. Then using the correct insulin syringe, which is determined by the type of insulin, is essential. Griffin, a 4-year-old beagle who was given up because of diabetes, was adopted by Elise Shadoff of San Diego, California, when he was 4 years old. We have found that Griffin performs best on Humulin N. This dog food fits with my dog's raw diet needs very well. 
Griffin has been on the humulin end for four years and has remained stable. Recombinant human insulin and porcine insulin closely resemble dog insulin, so they work best in most cases. However, prior to the availability of other alternatives, beef insulin was successfully used in dogs, but it is no longer recommended for that purpose because it may result in the production of anti-insulin antibodies, which can cause the dog to develop a low level of glucose control. Madison, Wisconsin resident Diane DeSalvo says that, Walmart sells humulin insulin for less than other vets and pharmacies, after her dog, Scout, developed diabetes two years ago. Eli Lilly makes all the insulin, but they package it in the Relion design for Walmart. In the majority of cases, insulin is given two times daily, either before or after a meal. In order to be certain that the dog eats, feeding before administering insulin is preferable. It's reasonable to assume that your dog is a chow hound, and then to reward her for putting up with the insulin injection by feeding her. Most dogs tolerate injections well, as the needles used are very thin. Henry, a corgi from Kensington, Maryland, was diagnosed with diabetes four years ago and took insulin. According to Albert, Henry gets insulin shots twice daily following each meal. After the injection, he knows he will get a treat, so he comes looking for me to get his shot. Giving insulin injections properly is important. Problems often arise because the dog owner fails to administer the proper dosage. Your veterinarian will be observing you giving insulin to your dog, if possible. During the initial diagnosis and treatment of illness, Frequent monitoring may be required, like every one to two weeks, until the patient is stable and doing well. At that point, follow-up checks, veterinary exam, blood test, urinalysis, and urine culture should be performed every three to six months. Measuring fructosamin, glycated serum protein, is a useful means of assessing how well your blood sugar levels are being controlled. This test is the next best option if you cannot perform glucose curves. Fructosamin shows average blood glucose levels over a week or two, but blood glucose fluctuation lasts longer. Because fructosamin only looks at the mean glucose value, it will not accurately distinguish a patient who maintains tight control over their glucose level from one who experiences wide swings in their readings. Nonetheless, it's important to have fructosamin included in any monitoring routine. When fatty acids are broken down for energy in the liver and kidneys, ketones are produced as byproducts. Diabetic coma or death can result from dangerously high levels of ketones, which are called ketoacidosis. If you or someone you know experiences these symptoms, consult a physician immediately. Ketoacidosis is commonly linked to infection or inflammation of other kinds, such as urinary tract infection, pancreatitis, or Cushing's disease. Urine ketostics test strips are available in pharmacies around the country. Looking for ketones occasionally is not a problem, but three days in a row with a positive dipstick warrants a visit to the vet. A blood glucose curve is an on-off effect on blood glucose levels. Using a pet's blood glucose curve as a tool, your veterinarian will either validate or adjust your pet's insulin dose. To make things simple, we just follow these steps, immediately after your pet has eaten its first meal, preferably at home, take the first blood sample shortly before you give your pet the morning insulin shot. In order to accurately track changes in the body, samples of blood are taken throughout the day every 2 hours for the first 12 hours, if possible. This information is graphed and a curve is generated to help veterinarians evaluate the current insulin dosage. When I suspect that my dog has low blood sugar, hypoglycemia, what should I do? You might have hypoglycemia if you see the following, dissatisfaction uncontrollable quivering any behavior or movement that seems unusual uncharacteristic lack of activity and alteration in the level of consciousness, coma, Supplementation is prescribed by your veterinarian if you suspect your pet is experiencing signs of hypoglycemia. If you have not come up with a plan, and your dog is conscious, you should immediately administer sugar, corn syrup, to your cat's mouth by dipping a finger into the liquid and rubbing it onto your dog's teeth. 
Very quickly, your cat will become hyperglycemic and show signs of increased hunger in approximately 1 to 2 minutes. Never allow your cat to drink sugar water that has been poured directly into their mouth, as this could lead to inhaling the solution into the lungs. When your cat sits up after receiving its sugar administration, you can begin to feed it a small meal. The cat must be stable before moving it to your veterinarian for examination. For a dog with diabetes mellitus, is an anesthetic procedure safe? Before anesthetizing an animal, an empty stomach is usually required. A diabetic dog that has not been fed needs far less insulin than a dog that has just been fed. Vet may recommend you administer your dog's dose of insulin before admission, or you may be allowed to administer a reduced dosage of insulin on your own. Intravenous fluid therapy is usually given to diabetic dogs during surgery so that they are anesthetized. The animal is hydrated when it is unable to drink by itself. Your diabetic dog is not at any additional risk from anesthesia than a non-diabetic dog of the same age. If diabetes makes my dog go blind, will it affect his vision? Sadly, diabetic dogs are more likely to develop cataracts, which causes them to lose their eyesight. The accumulation of water in the eye lens is responsible for this. On the average, cataract treatment is simple, however, for diabetic animals, surgery is riskier. Blindness can occur. In animals, does diabetes have a close resemblance to human diabetes? Actually, it is almost identical. As your dog is being treated for diabetes, he will use the same equipment, medications, and monitoring methods as human diabetics use. Polyuria, polydipsia, and polyphagia mean how many more or more frequently urination, drinking, and eating occur than normal. Polyuria is a large quantity of urine production in a short time, e.g., per day. Polydipsia is a long-term or chronic condition of excessive thirst. Polyphagia is a wonderful form of yearning. At what age should a dog with diabetes be put down, and what is the expected average lifespan? It can be especially difficult to accept that your dog has a disease because, in the case of canine diabetes, there is no known cure. To begin with, you will have to think about when you may need to put your dog down and how long they might have to live. It is widely held that diabetes in dogs is fatal, thus, when diagnosed, dogs should be put to sleep. Diabetes, when properly managed, is typically manageable most of the time. What time is the best time to put a dog with diabetes to sleep? With the exception of the senior dogs or those with other health issues associated with their diagnosis, your dog should not be put to sleep unless absolutely necessary. Before making a decision, consult with your vet about their life expectancy, any health issues, and their outlook. How long does it take to get an insulin-sensitive animal under control? Every situation is different. It is impossible to determine exactly how long this process will take. Even when a regulation process requires you to test different dosages, diets, or injection frequencies, you may be required to go through the process of regulation. A therapeutic intervention can take between 1 and 12 months to show results. When making this transition, it is absolutely critical to collaborate with your veterinarian so as to avoid any further complications. Once your dog is under control, you will still need to visit the vet regularly to keep it in good health.